All right. Guys, we are in the middle of Westminster Shorter Catechism, going all the way to question, I think we're at question 70 something, right? So that means at CYG, we started with question number one. Does anyone remember the first question? You will get a full size candy bar if you remember. What is the chief end of man? <laughs> That's right. What's the chief end of man? And the answer? Uh, glorify God and enjoy him forever. Amen. That's question number one. That's awesome. Does anyone know question number two? <laughs> question number two. How do we know how to glorify God and enjoy him? The word of God tells us that, right? The answer is the word of God is the only way that we know how to glorify him and how to please him. And so we've been going through these questions from one and now we're all the way at 70 something. So I hope you've been learning a lot. Um, and we're actually going through the Ten Commandments right now. So here is Jesus answering the question to summarize all the commandments of the Bible, not just the ten, but all the other ones. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied. You guys read the words in red. Ready? Go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment which is also the first question of our whole study. What is the reason why you live? To glorify God. And how do you glorify him? By loving him. Then the second is like it. Ready? Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So I've shown you this picture before. Two tablets of the law. Okay, can you guys remember the first one? You shall have... No other gods before me. And the second is, do not make any idols. What's the third one? Do not misuse the name of God. Yes. And what do you do on the Sabbath? Keep it holy. The serving him, worshiping him. That's the first four for the love of God. That's your vertical responsibility to God. And then the next six, love man, which is first, honor your father and mother. It's so interesting. Today in Sunday school, I had a four-year-old or five-year-old when we were going over the Ten Commandments because we're in the Moses story right now. She said, Mrs. Kim, what is obey? <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, obey means what? To listen, to follow, to submit. That's what it meant. Okay, so not your sister. <laughs> so, um, and then I asked, how many of you broke this command? Okay. And everyone except one or two of the youngest ones, and that included your sister. And she didn't raise her hand, and then the other sister was like, excuse me, <laughs> you, know, you break this command every single day. All of us do. Raise your hand. I broke that command. Yeah. Yes. Like even today, Isaiah did not take out that plastic thing from his mouth when I told him to take it out. So that's disobeying mine. So <laughs> yeah. OK, then. Now. Remember this one? Do not murder. Raise your hand if you broke this command. Remember? Murdering in our hearts. Number seven, do not commit adultery. Raise your hand. <laughs> he, he missed this message, so he didn't hear that any lustful thought, any wrong thought you have about a woman, not your wife, is a sin. Yeah. And at the time you watch... Any kind of movie or scene that is un unholy, okay, which is almost every single show out there, that's also participating in the sin. <sighs> Last week we did do not steal. Okay, so that was a serious one. What? Number nine. Number nine. Do you know what it is? Stop. Do not. Number nine. No. This is something that most of you guys. Uh, probably break every single day. Do not lie. Exactly. <laughs> Don't. You're proud about that. Okay. Do not lie. And the last one is do not covet, which means don't be envious. Okay. So these are all of our horizontal responsibilities. And so we know the law. So can you keep it? No, we can't. It's actually impossible. Okay. And who is guilty of breaking the law? It's almost depressing when you really study the Ten Commandments how much we have broken it every single day. 
Let's read Romans 3.23. Go. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 3.10. Ready? Go. There is no one righteous, not even one. So it doesn't mean we shouldn't try, right? People say you should try to keep the Ten Commandments because they are moral. It's the moral code. It's universal. And the reason why, uh, actually, many of the developed nations come up with their constitution and their rule of law from the basic principles of the Ten Commandments. What happens if I try to obey it on my own? What happens? You can't, right? But if you try and you actually feel successful, you fall into what? Phariseeism, thinking that you're better than other people, or maybe you have fake religion. But we should keep the law. We have to keep the law. First reason is to avoid punishment, yes, but only to avoid punishment. Should you not lie and cheat only because if you get caught, you're going to go to jail? It helps, actually. <laughs> right? It helps to have those rules and consequences. Stop. Isaiah. It helps to have those consequences. But the real reason why we keep the law, guys, is because we love God. The reason why you obey your parents, because you love them. And because they love you. And it's also a blessing. It's, it's, a con it's a command with a blessing. If you obey your parents, obey and honor, it says that you will live a long life. You will be living in prosperity. So if, unless you guys want to fall into uh, dying early and also living inside of curses, you know, we, we need to obey those commands. But it is out of our love to God, our gratitude to God, and also by the grace of God. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit can we obey God. Okay, so when you feel broken, when you feel, my goodness, I did it again, and we start falling into this guilt and depression, it should actually point us to who? Jesus, yeah. It points us to Jesus who was perfect and yet he took your punishment. He took it for you, although you deserve to die. So we're at number 76. What is the ninth commandment? You guys read the answer, go. Oh, sorry, it says seventh, it meant, it meant ninth. Ready, go. The ninth commandment is, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. This is what it actually says, although it means don't lie. Okay, but I'll tell you more detail what that means. What does it require? The ninth commandment, read it, requires us to tell the truth and to maintain and promote it and our and others' reputations, especially when testifying. Okay, it requires us to tell the truth okay tell the truth maintain it promote it but not only to keep your reputation but others reputation in, in testifying i'll explain later number 78 ready go the ninth commandment forbids anything that gets in the way of the truth or injures anyone's reputation so when the bible says what is you know do not give false testimony what does that mean so it really means lying in the court of law. Did you know that perjury is a real crime? A real crime. Perjury, yes. Okay, so perjury is when you're in the court of law and then you stand on the witness stand. You've seen that, right? And you have to hold your Bible and then you, you make a vow saying, I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, and only the truth, something like that, right? So when they say, so, did you see Maddox steal the Reese's Pieces from the store. No, 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 you're the witness, I'm sorry. Did you see Darius steal that candy bar from the store? And then Ma Maddox, maybe he didn't really do it. He was like, yes, I did. Judge, I saw it with my own two eyes. Okay? So he's lying in court, right? He's lying. That's called, that's called perjury. Yeah. But let's say that Isaiah was really the one who stole it. Okay, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to hide the truth by lying about it. And in the end, if the judge says, okay, the witness says he did it, we don't have any CCTV to prove it, so I don't know. They found the candy in your bag, whatever it is, whatever reason it is. Let's say that he was found guilty and he had to pay a fine of $1,000 plus it's a misdemeanor. 
So what happened to him? His reputation is broken. He got punished unjustly because of your witness. So God, back then in the Bible times, they were already having court of law too because people were, you know, blaming each other for stuff. And Moses set up these judges and they had to come in the court. And whenever they had two or three witnesses, then they could, they can punish this person. So God, in order to stop people from lying in court, this command is so serious that you will get punished the very same way or worse. The liars get punished the same or worse. So you didn't even do anything. All you did is lie about it, but you will get punished. So right now, I found out that the, the perjury for certain places, you can get up to five years in jail. For just lying in the court, you get five years in jail. It's a, it's, a, it's a felony. It's actually a very serious, and I wish Mike was here to help us, but it's a very serious thing. Okay, so what if you're like, well, I'm never inside of the court. But still, false testimony is also about lies. Do not lie. White lies, half-truths, they're all lies. Okay, so give me a good example of lies, average lies that kids do. Give me one. Any example? <coughs> uh, a mom says, did you do your homework? Yeah. And you didn't, but you say, yes. yes. Or you'll say, I don't have homework. <laughs> Was that the truth? No. How about this? OK, good. Did you do your chores? And you say, no, but you did not. <laughs> Okay, so Isaiah, give me an example. I could think of one. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you didn't say it, but having having the impression of doing something when you didn't is also a lie. Kind of like pretending to be putting your helmet on when you don't have it on. Okay, so that's actually a deception. So anything can be a lie. And we, in this age, lie so much that it's almost like we don't think it's a problem. We don't think it's a problem anymore. I, I worked with a lot of people in the past. I, I had a school, and I had teachers working for me. And m unusual to the school, to other schools, I had a lot of male teachers, OK? And I would like to do a study and, and maybe find research on this. But I feel like guys lie a lot more than girls and I know why because they tend to get in trouble more right for some of mischievousness or being too active or whatnot and so kids they lie to get out of trouble and I understand that because it's out of fear we're lying out of fear not because you want to hurt anybody but lying out of fear is still lying so there was a guy who worked for me and he was a foreigner, and you're supposed to have a valid visa to work in Korea. And our school would pay money for him to travel out of the country, renew his visa, and come back. Okay? And we were giving him money to do this. So he would go out of the country, maybe $200, $300, get out of the country, and come back right back in, and he would get another three months. And I, later I found out that he had been illegal for nine months. So he would still. He's lying that he was legally at in work. And he was lying and even taking the money, I believe, that was supposed to be for the airfare. <laughs> right? So then we asked him, so where were you this weekend? He's like, oh, I went on the boat, and I went to Japan, and I came back. We're like, really? OK. What time did you go? And he kept lying and lying and lying to exact time where he was. And I know that he was lying because I had the boat schedule in front of me. And, and I know that he was lying until finally I had to say, you know, you, you just tell me the truth. I know you didn't go. I know you're nine months overdue. So unless you want to have no job from right now, you tell me the truth. So he told me, finally, I'm sorry, I, I lied for nine months. <laughs> All right, so... And, and that's a, that seems like a really big idea, but there are so many little lies that kind of add up. The little lies add up. And there's also lying about others, right? What's that called? When you lie about, did you hear? Da -da -da -da. Did you hear this? Da -da -da -da. Yeah. And when you when when you spread rumors, what's that called? Gah. 
Gossiping, yes. When you gossip about other people, that's lying. But also, slander is a, the worst type of gossip, which is, oh my gosh, did you hear this? And then it really hurts that person's reputation. So ruining someone's reputation on the ultimate end is the sin that God is saying stop doing because it's not acting out of love. Where does lying come from? Okay, it is a sin. And who is the first liar? Satan. He is the first liar, and he's called the father of all lies. By the way, since Mike is here, um, what is the penalty for perjury in court? How many years? Mm -hmm. How many years? Okay, so that's pretty serious, right? It's a felony charge. We're talking about lying. <laughs> State prison. Yes. So the reason it's such a big crime is because it has to do with the truth and the justice. And it could actually cause so much injustice to somebody if you lie in court. But it's Satan who's the ultimate liar. How do we know this? The Bible says that in John 8, 44. Read it with me. Go. You are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Woo, what is this? When he speaks, where is it? He speaks out of his own character. So what that means, every word he says is a lie. His language is lie, 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 lie. So if you have a bad habit of lying, what does that say? How, what does that say? You're just like your father. That means you're connected to Satan because he's a liar. Okay? But if you have Christ, are you supposed to be connected to Satan? No. But why do we imitate him? And why are we following him? Okay? We're being deceived by our own sin nature. But lying is a way okay, that totally pleases the devil. But you can't blame Satan because you are responsible for your own sins. Um, and I'm encouraging my children and all of us, okay, to be truthful, to honor God with the truth and have integrity. You know what integrity is? What's that word mean? Hmm? Doing the right thing? Yes, it is doing the right thing. But to be more specific, integrity means doing the right thing when no one's looking. Yeah, when no one is looking, you're, you're, you're truthful sincere so there's no lying and pretending because we can all pretend to be nice in front of other people right guys right you can be giving a smile and be so nice and yet on the inside you're full of beep okay <laughs> and then there are people who are two-faced two-faced people who say one thing to one person and then say another thing to another person. So that person is kind of lying too, right? And then to, to get really, really far, there are the con artists. What's a con artist? A liar. Oh my gosh, I've met so many con artists in my life and I have been conned. I've been duped a lot. Okay, duped by people who lie about a product, lie about a service, lie about insurance, lie about this and that, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And then I sign up for it, and I lose a lot of money. This happened to me so many times. And I think that I've been a little in ignorant because I assume that people are telling the truth. So let's be a little street smart. You don't need to assume that everyone's telling the truth, but you don't want to doubt everybody and always be suspicious, okay? Don't be sus about it, okay? But, <laughs> but at the same time, be, be, have, be a person of integrity. Isaiah? A person of integrity, which means when mom says, this is the rule for riding your electric bike, you need to keep that rule, right? And I'd like to say that to my older son, who has a car now, when there's a rule concerning driving, you need to keep that rule, okay? That's called integrity. So you need integrity financially too, because when you, when you try to trick people financially, that's also lying, 
It's connected to stealing. Stealing and lying are very connected. But remember that it's the devil who is the professional. He's the professional liar, stealer, thief, and a liar. And you don't want to co be connected to him. You don't want him as your uncle, okay? You don't want him to be your role model. By the way, cheating is also lying, right? When you cheat on your tests or cheat on stuff, that's also lying. So, but I'm speaking to you not as someone who is perfect, okay? Because I also have a hard time trying to be completely truthful. Now, you do need wisdom because you don't have to say everything on your mind to everybody that you meet, okay? Those who do that have slight social issues, okay? Where they'd be like, oh, you look ugly today. Okay, you don't need to say that. <laughs> Because some people will say, I don't want to lie, okay, but there's a, there is a place where you have to say certain things, okay, but it's so important to be desiring truth because God is the God of truth. God is the God of truth and his word is truth. So how can I obey God in this one area? I, I wrote three things. First is you need to know the truth first, okay? Know the truth. Let's read these really important verses from John. John 8, 32. Ready? Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth equals liberation. Lies will bring you bondage. Okay? So the more we lie, the more we have to cover it up, and it brings so much anxiety in our hearts. It's so much better to be honest. It's so much better to tell the truth. And if your parents discipline you properly, okay, do they want you to pretend that you're obeying or do they want you to be honest? Yes. Again, it takes courage to be honest because you might get punished. You might get privileges taken away as a consequence, but it's better to be honest. Okay, and I, I know this is true as well. The more we lie and break trust, it ruins a relationship, right? It ruins the relationship. When someone lies to you and you find out about it, how do you feel? You feel betrayed, right? You feel hurt, you feel disappointed. <laughs> yeah, you feel like, oh my gosh, what, I believe that person. But of course, there's room for forgiveness when a person is very sorry, when they really repent, okay? So when you do make a mistake, I think it's a wonderful thing when you are honest about it and you tell God you're sorry and you tell the person you wronged you're sorry, right? John 14, 6, ready? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. Okay? So who is that truth that's going to set you free? Jesus. Who's the truth? Jesus. He's, he is the truth. And he's the one who sets you free by, the, by his own blood and by his Holy Spirit. And I love John 17, 17. Go. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Who knows what sanctify means? Sanctify. Sanctification. Okay. But the word sanctify means, Elisha, focus. What does it mean? Mm -mm. that's connected to justification so sanctify sanctification yes okay it means to make them holy god make them holy make them set apart make them co closer to you in your truth and so how is that method the the word it's the word of god okay so how do i obey god in this command i have to know the truth the closer i get to jesus the more i will be like him and the more i Come closer to him. The second one is worship in truth. What does John 4, 24 say? God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Yeah. So we have to know the truth in order to worship in truth. It would be very sad if you're worshiping and it's a lie. Okay? If we're worshiping and we're giving wrong messages that are not biblical and it's leading you astray, that would be horrible. So you have to know the truth. And you have to worship in truth, which means don't have, don't have pretense, don't pretend, don't come for other people, don't come with other motives. It has to be in a humble state where you're coming to worship him. Number three, what should you do? 
Speak the truth. Let's read Proverbs 12. Ready? The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. How do you become trustworthy? When you tell the truth, when you have integrity, when you do what's right. And this happens not only one time in a while, once in a while. It has to happen daily, every day. So practice doing that. If you are a child of God, if you're a Christian, if you've been saved, this is now what the Lord is wanting us to do, to live in his truth. Have integrity. So if you're working, for example, at a cafe, right? Nobody might be looking at you, but how you do your work when you're all by yourself and nobody's looking, that is a sign of integrity, isn't it? There are some people who only do a good job because their boss is watching. There are people like that, and I've seen it happen, and it happened to me too, where they appear to be so good only when their supervisor is there. But when there's nobody around, they're a completely different person. That's also deceiving. So we, we want to be trustworthy people. It's very hard because you have to always remember, I'm standing in front of who? God. Can you hide from him? Is there any moment where he's not watching or he's not with you? No. 100%, 24-7, I have to stand in front of God. And there's a word in, in Latin, which is coram deo. Coram deo, which means I stand in front of God. There's one more verse I want to read. Ephesians 4, 25. Ready? Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So we help each other by telling the truth with one another. And in the end, how can I obey God? Is it with your own strength? No. It's with, with the new self. The old self that is bound to Satan is dead, and we have the new self which is in Christ. Ready? You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. To be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So the old self is filled with desires and greed and sinfulness. And that's what happened to us. Well, that's how we used to live outside of Christ. Now that we're inside of Christ, Christ is in us. We have this new identity. Okay, but it's an everyday spiritual battle. We are fighting our sin, fighting temptation. But it's fundamentally different because you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have now the Holy Spirit to help you. And how did you have this new life, this new sense of self? It's in Christ Jesus alone. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Yes. So the change doesn't come from outside first. Where does it come from? Inside. It has to come from the inside. Okay? And God is always looking at the inside. He's always knowing what your heart, your motive is. And that's why we have to check our heart too. There's a song out there, a fun song called Check Your Heart. Check Your Heart. It's made by this comedian guy. But I like that song because it's, it's true. We have to check our heart always. Amen? Amen. 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 Who are we? Everybody. What do we have? How should you live? For what? G2G. Everything for the glory of God. Every little thing. Every little thing. So that's why, if at all possible, let's try to stand in front of God and do the right thing. Why isn't it coming out? Hi.